Florida. My name is Steve Russell along with Ken Tomash. We present Southeastern Conference basketball, the Florida Gators against the Georgia Bulldogs. Ken, when you talk about the Georgia Bulldogs, the guy you talk about right away is 6'7 guard Willie Anderson. Willie has really found a home since being moved from the forward position two years ago as a sophomore. He's one of the most dangerous players in the SEC, one of the best all-around players in the SEC, and it's going to be a task for Florida to find someone to guard someone like Anderson with that great combination of size and quickness. So that's going to be a tough task for Florida today. For the Gators, obviously a couple of guys struggling. Livingston Chapman is one. The guy really struggling, though, is guard Vernon Maxwell. He's only shooting about 35% in his last five outings. And when Florida does not shoot well, they do not play well. They didn't shoot uh, very well Wednesday night in the loss to Auburn. Only really Pat Lawrence and Dwayne Shinsis played well. And as a result, they got beat on the offensive side of things. One bright spot for the Gators, as you mentioned, was the play of center Dwayne Sinches booed here in the O'Connell Center uh, last week for coming up with a 23-point effort against Auburn. Well, now he's going to be going up against Chad Kessler, who is a six foot nine sophomore. Dwayne, of course, also a sophomore, but he uh, outsizes Kessler by a good five inches. Kessler coming off a 24-point performance. That was a career-high performance for him uh, Thursday night against Alabama. So it's going to be another good matchup for Dwayne. The starting lineup is being introduced for the Georgia Bulldogs now. First is Tony Mack. Then at uh, the other forward is Eric Burdett. The center, as we mentioned, is Alec Kessler, brother of Chad Kessler. Kessler only 6'10", so Cinches once again will have a height advantage. At the guard from Gainesville, Georgia, will be junior Patrick Hamilton. Hamilton's their best defensive player. They'll probably put him on Vernon Maxwell. And, of course, the guy we talked about earlier was 6'7 guard Willie Anderson, the preseason pick as player of the year in the Southeastern Conference. We also want to mention Hugh Durham because he has done something that many coaches have not done. He's one of only seven coaches to take two different schools to the NCAA Final Four. Of course, you know Georgia. He took the Bulldogs there in 1983, but he took Florida State to the championship game of the NCAA tournament back in 1972, where they lost to UCLA. The Gator starters being introduced now. The forwards, of course, familiar. Pat Lawrence and Livingston Chapman. Chapman, the one struggling. Lawrence had a good game against Auburn. Here's a guy who has received a lot of negative publicity lately. Dwayne Sitches, although a 23-point effort against the Auburn Tigers. At guard, double zero, Ronnie Montgomery, and the other guard, Gainesville's Vernon Maxwell. That about sets the stage for today's Southeastern Conference matchup between the Florida Gators and the Georgia Bulldogs. We'll come back for the opening tip-off after this. This is Cox Cable 8 Sports. The first name in copiers probably isn't the copier name you think of first. But it's a name that links speed and performance with uncompromising reliability and makes innovative technology simple to use. For meeting the needs of every size business, business relies on the most popular copiers in America. From personal to high-performance copiers, the choice is Canon. Call Southern Copy Products at 376-8058. To be a winner, you must rise to meet any challenge that may be encountered. At Gary Massey Chevrolet, we're rising to the challenge every day. Many new 87 Camaros, 5 speeds, and V6s at this unheard of price. The 88 Monte Carlo LS, a true trendsetter, and now at this low, low price. You'll be a winner at Gary Massey Chevrolet. That's today, Chevrolet. Back at the O'Connell Center, we are underway. The Bulldogs control the tip. This is Willie Anderson. The Gators come out in a man-to-man -man defense. Maxwell will guard Anderson. Well, Maxwell's been known to play some great defense. He did a great job on Tony White here last year, who was the leading scorer in the SEC. Let's see what he can do on Anderson. Tony Mack back to Eric Burdett. The Gators again play the man-to-man -man early. Georgia having trouble with it. Right side, Burdett. He is guarded by Chapman. This is Anderson. Anderson dribbles left side in the lane to Mack. Mack the drive. His shot is... Tony Mack could get free from his man, Pat Lawrence, and lay it in. Anybody who has followed Georgia knows that Hugh Durham plays a tough man-to-man. -to -man. They're out on that right away. This is Pat Lawrence. To Cinch's right side. They go out to Montgomery, left wing. Into Lawrence. Gator setting things up. They go inside the cinches. They are double and triple teaming him into cinches. The turnaround is no good. Georgia rebounds with Eric Burdett. They lead 2-0. Uh, Dwayne has to be careful that he doesn't get down on himself. He has a tendency to do that if he misses his first shot or Kessler two. Kessler drives on cinches. It's blocked. 
and out of bounds. It'll be Bulldog ball. So Sinchis recovers and blocks it out of bounds. Dwayne showing some nice intensity here in the opening moments of the game. Sinchis much maligned here recently. A 23-point effort, though, against the Tigers. It will keep possession just underway here. 18-49 left first half. Georgia with the early 2-0 lead. They inbound to Anderson. Anderson dribbles now to the right wing. They go to Burdett. They go inside, whistle for a foul. It'll be against Livingston Chapman of Florida. Chapman gets the foul, his first and the team's first. Check that, they give the foul to Pat Lawrence, not Chapman. So Lawrence gets the foul. In the lane, little one-hander is good by Tony Mack. So he scored all four points for the Bulldogs and in the game, 4-0 Georgia. Mack, their leading scorer of a year ago, but only played 12 games before he uh, fell victim to academic problems. He Max, can fill it up. Maxwell to Cinches. Here's Lawrence. He's guarded by Mack. Right side to Montgomery. He jumps one up. It is no good, and a foul on the rebound. It'll be against Kessler. Florida's getting good ball movement, getting the open shots. They're just not falling. There's Kessler, his first foul. He is Georgia's tallest starter at 6'10", but I think they're generous in giving him that height. Georgia's first foul, Gators will inbounds with Pat Lawrence. Gets to the Montgomery, and there is a foul that's called on Patrick Hamilton. Hamilton knocking Montgomery out of bounds, his first foul. Foul is on number 14, Patrick Hamilton, his first. Team's second foul, 18-13 left first half. 4-0 Georgia. Lawrence to Cinches on the inbound to Chapman. Foul line jumper is no good. Rebound is tapped around. Georgia controls with Tony Mack. Here's Anderson. Celebrate the new year with Showtime's top 10 exclusives. Every month, Showtime guarantees you at least 10 movies, original series, and special events you won't see on HBO. In January, Eddie Murphy stars in The Golden Child. Uncover crimes of the heart with Sissy Spacek, Jessica Lange, and Diane Keaton. Showtime Comedy features its Gary Shandling show and joins Stevie Nicks in concert. Showtime's January top 10 exclusives. You won't see them on HBO because they're only on Showtime. pizza in town there is no need to negotiate leonardo's is the best leonardo's leonardo's definitely of course it's leonardo's what other pizza has so much sauce such fresh ingredients such mountains of cheese the choice is easy <laughs> are you kidding me leonardo's To Sinches in the paint. Sinches turnaround jumper, no good. Rebound comes out to Hamilton. Quick outlet pass is thrown away. And the Gators get the ball back. Florida's got to be saying to themselves, this is what happened against Auburn. They just could not get the shots to fall. And when Florida can't get the shots to fall, they are in big trouble. First substitution of the game is Pat Lawrence will go out and Patrick Aaron from Montgomery, Alabama, the sophomore, will enter. Patrick played 10 good minutes Monday night in Ta against Towson State in our game. Kessler rebounds. Here comes Georgia. Anderson right wing against Maxwell. The spinning move. Maxwell hits the deck. No call. Again, Anderson. This is Burdett. Now the Bulldogs will set things up. Hamilton. The one bounce to Anderson. The spinning move. The jumper is no good. Georgia rebounds and a foul as Burdett inside is hammered. Burdett just fought for position underneath amongst three Gators, got the board, stick it back in, and drew the foul. Florida, Georgia is posting up Willie Anderson down the lows. They're taking advantage of the, the height advantage he has over Vernon Maxwell. Max, of course, an excellent defensive player, but he's given up a couple inches to Anderson. Sinches gets the foul, his first, the team's second. Burdett at the line will shoot two. The sophomore from Greensboro, Georgia, his first is good. His first points, 9-4, Georgia. Georgia coming in 9-5, and 1-1 one and one in the conference. And now Dwayne Davis gets Dwayne Sinches. Davis, very impressive lately, one of the few Gators to be playing consistent basketball of late. Had his career high, 11 points in our game Monday night against Towson State. Burdett very deliberate at the line. Second shot is up and good. 
Bulldogs on top 10-4 with 16 minutes left in the first half. Here's Montgomery guarded by Hamilton. Aaron. Montgomery looks for help. Takes the jumper himself. It's no good. Rebound is fought for and he's still loose. Davis gets the rebound, lays it home, and a foul. That's the kind of spark Dwayne Davis has been giving this club off the bench. Come in, get a rebound, stick it back in, and draws the foul. The foul is on Alec Kessler, his second foul. Georgia can ill afford to lose their big man. Georgia's third team foul, so Davis will try to complete the three-point play. Davis, the academic casualty of a year ago, has come on strong here of late for Norm Sloan's Gators. 10-6, shot good, 10-7, Georgia. Davis has three. And we have a travel in the backcourt against Patrick Hamilton. The Gators employing the press defense. The turnover, Florida gets the ball back. That was one of the big keys to Florida's success last year. The pressing defense, they would force more turnovers than they would cause themselves on offense. And they're doing it again here. Gators can cut it to one. This is Montgomery. Looking for a help. Gets it to Aaron. Aaron to Chapman, who was posted inside. They go back outside to... Montgomery, Maxwell, three-point shot up, good. Vernon Maxwell, the three-pointer, he has got five. It is tied at 10. The Bulldogs, Anderson, right corner. Mack has it almost stolen, but Hamilton gets it back into the crowd now with seven quick ones. Maxwell spins away from Anderson in the paint. But no shot. Vernon gets it back in the corner to Montgomery. Montgomery penetrates, lays it off to Davis. It's knocked out. It'll be Georgia ball. Florida's a little out of control here. They may need to settle down just a little bit on offense. Ball movement is one thing, and it's good, but they're getting a little too out of hand with it. Timeout on the floor, 14.46 to go. Norm Sloan will talk it over with the skaters. Georgia on top, 13-10. A couple things that I'm surprised at, Ken, at least here early. Number one, the fact that the Georgia has really come at Florida. They are not afraid at all of cinches and the height. And the second thing that surprised me is the fact that uh, when, when Florida goes defensive playing man-to-man -man straight up and saying, hey, come get us, Georgia. Right, Florida played that 3-2 zone against Auburn Wednesday night. And as such, they were left out of position a lot on the uh, defensive boards. Here today, coming out in what they do best, which is the man-to-man -man defense. It was successful for them last year. We saw had success with it Monday night and really through the first part of this season. It is also nice to see a couple of Gators having pretty good days here early. Vernon Maxwell, who had struggled, already has five. Chapman already has two points. The, the Georgia bench, I'm sure, just saying, hey, we're playing pretty good defense here. We're shooting the ball pretty well. I don't think Hugh Durham can be too unhappy with the way his team's played so far. Well, this is a much different Georgia team than the one that came into the O-Dome last year. Remember, they had lost three of their top six players, and uh, Coach Hugh Durham had to slow things down. They came into the Dome last year and played a slow-tempo game because they knew they have the horses to do it, and that's why we're seeing more of a running game today. The Gator bench with Patrick Aaron, Dwayne Cinch is standing there. Very important game for the Gators because obviously you do not want to go 0-2 to begin the Southeastern Conference. It's a pretty big hole to dig yourself in. The Gators were picked to finish second in the league this year. Georgia was picked to finish third. Georgia has beaten Alabama on a late tip-in by Tony Mack. They lost to Kentucky and Atlanta. Of course, the Gators 0-1 having lost to Auburn. And right away, the Gators shooting percentage is not very good, Ken. Georgia shooting 71% from the floor. They've hit five out of seven. Florida just four of 12. As we said, they're taking some long shots. As you see, Hugh Durham called this club the miracle workers last year after they were picked to finish last in the conference. They went 18 and 12 and got an NCAA bid. And of course, Norm Sloan has over 500 wins to his credit and a long and successful coaching career. Bulldogs with a basketball, Anderson to Hamilton. Georgia still with their starting five in the game. Kessler dribbles left side, waits, gets it back to Eric Bordet. Anderson guarded by Maxwell. Pick set for him, jumper left side, good. Nice pick set by Georgia, and Anderson takes advantage. Anderson has four, 15-10, Georgia. Inside to Davis. Davis has the shot blocked, but they're going to call a goal 10 on Tony Mack. Credit the basket to Dwayne Davis. Dwayne Davis, as we said, has worked very hard on his game without the basketball. That time he found the open spot in the lane and got through underneath for good position to take the pass. There you see Dwayne Davis 
who is playing the center position now for Florida, and Georgia makes a change at center. They bring in freshman Neville Austin for Chad Kessler. Here's a foul. He's going to be down low against Florida. I think Pat Lawrence will get a second foul. Well, we may see Chris. Georgia will inbound with Willie Anderson. It's stolen by the Gators. Florida can cut it to one point here with a basket. Can tie things with a three-pointer. Lawrence launches one up. It's good for three, and the Gators tie it. Lawrence, very hot lately from three-point range, ties things at 15. Remember, he hit his first five three-pointers against Auburn, finished with 20 points. Georgia throws it away. The Gators playing good defense, and now Clifford Lett will check into the game for Pat Lawrence. Lett played very well in the Towson State game last week, especially late. So now Florida going to go with its three-guard offense. Maybe they can get some of the better shooters in the game and start shooting the ball better. The left side jump shot is good for three. Vernon Maxwell. Vernon has eight, and the Gators have their biggest lead at three, 18-15 with 13-20. This is Burdett. Again, the Gators go man-to-man -man in the paint. This is Mack. His shot is no good. The rebound, Dwayne Davis. Here's Montgomery. Long pass left side. Jumper is no good, but the tip is good by Chapman. They're finally getting good rebounding position. And we have a foul called on the other end as several players hit the deck. We had a timeout called by Georgia. No play, but as you can see, Patrick Hamilton is down and is hurt. But the Gators, after trailing most of the game, all of a sudden lead by 5, 20 to 15, as Patrick Hamilton is still down and now will be attended to by a trainer. 12.52 left in the first half, and the turnaround came suddenly and quickly, Ken. 20 to 15. There's Hamilton walking very gingerly to the Georgia bench. Meantime, the Florida bench has to be very happy with that spurt of offense by the Gators. Dwayne Davis coming in, doing a good job on both ends of the floor. Got a couple of rebounds, stuck one in and drew a foul. That's the kind of thing he's doing very well off the bench for Florida. The Gators on an eight nothing tear there. You may recall it was Georgia 15 to 12. The Gators have scored the last eight points to take this five point lead with 12.52 left in the first half. The Georgia bench of Hugh Durham, the Gator fans on their feet here in the O'Connell Center. This place is not capacity, but it is close. Big crowd on hand despite rather inclement weather outside. By the way, let us uh, pass this along. The select a seat activity for the baseball team tomorrow at the newly renovated Perry Field, which, by the way, if you haven't seen it, it looks tremendous, has been called off because of the bad weather. Those who wish to select a seat for the Gator baseball season may stop by the Gator ticket office Monday through Friday from 9 until 4.30. So that activity tomorrow will be canceled because of rain and cold here in town. There you see Dwayne Davis, a freshman out of St. Pete, Boca Siega High, coming off an 11-point outing against Towson State in his last home game, averaging just under six points a game and doing a good job off the bench for Florida. Georgia will inbound. This is Anderson. Again, Maxwell guards Willie Anderson. Two of the premier guards in the SEC right there. Hamilton. Out to Burdett. Good defense again, employed by the Gators, a tough man-to-man. -man. This is Burdett, Chapman's got him. Looks for help, and Georgia will set up again. Ten seconds left on the shot clock, down low. The reverse layup is no good. The Gators' Livingston Chapman gets the rebound. Florida can increase their lead to seven. Montgomery, long pass, let does not take the shot. Maxwell. Looks for help. Long cross-court pass to Montgomery. He drives the paint. His shot is no good, but a foul. And we have an offensive foul, I believe, against Ronnie Montgomery. Neville Austin taking a finger in the eye, but he'll be all right. Montgomery's first foul. Team's fourth. Georgia down by five here. We'll get the ball. The Gators now have the press. 
Burdett looking for help. Long pa pass down court. Mack has got it. Layup is good. So Georgia breaks the press. Mack has a quick nine points. Georgia behind 2017. Montgomery right side to let. To Chapman. Turnaround jumper. No good. Rebound. Burdett of Georgia. Bulldogs come the other way. Hamilton. Inside to Austin, he's double teamed, a turnaround jumper floats, no good. Chapman rebounds, outlet to Lett. Lett leads the break. He runs into a Georgia player, it'll be a foul. It's against Clifford Lett and he knew it. Well, a two on three break, Lett should have pulled up and set the offense, but he tried to force it. By the time he realized he was trying to dump it off, he ran into the guy and caused the foul. Chris Capers enters the game for Florida now. Livingston Chapman will sit down. And for Georgia, Rod Cole will come in for Tony Mack. There is Capers, who hasn't seen a whole lot of action lately. Burdett to Hamilton. They break the press to get over the timeline. This is Anderson. He drives the baseline. Jump shot is no good. Rebound to the Gators. The outlet pass to Montgomery. Montgomery in the middle. Pass to Maxwell. Lay-in is no good. Tip is no good, but a foul called. It'll be against Georgia. Ronnie Montgomery, Vernon Maxwell, the guard tandem. Dwayne Davis goes out, Sixers comes in the crowd with a nice hand for Davis as he sits down near Norman Sloan. The foul goes to Neville Austin of Georgia, his first. The team has four. Vernon Maxwell will shoot the pair. Vernon coming off, uh, as you mentioned, Ken, some horrible shooting games, already has eight points. Two of those three-pointers shooting 68% from the line this year. His first one is good. 21-17, Florida. Maxwell's second one is good. Maxwell has 10, 22-17, Florida, and Georgia throws it away, trying to break the press in the backcourt. There's that press forcing the turnover. Turnover margin was the key, as we said last year, to Florida's success, and so far it's got them to a five-point lead here in the first half. Clifford Lett will inbound to Ronnie Montgomery. Both teams still employ the tough man-to-man. -to -man. There's a foul on Willie Anderson trying to steal the ball from Lett. Anderson's first foul. Georgia has five team fouls at the 10:49 mark of the half. Alec Kessler will return Alec for the Bulldogs. And Eric Burdett will get a breather. Burdett leaves with two points. Let inbounds right side to Montgomery. He'll dribble out to set things up. This is Let. Let getting the screen from Capers in the lane. Right side to Montgomery. His jumper's good. Montgomery's first two points. Gators up now by seven, 24-17 with 10 and a half left first half. The Bulldogs will set up. Hamilton left side, takes the jump shot. The bank is no good. Cinches battles for the rebound and gets it. Outlets to Maxwell. The Gators have a two on two. Maxwell, the little jumper is in and good. Vernon has 12, his best game in a while, and the Gators have opened up a nine-point lead. The Gators have managed to get the tempo up to where they like it. Kessler, up high. Now dribbles in the lane, his jump shot is good. Alec Kessler. Alec Kessler, his fourth point. Georgia trims it now to a seven-point deficit, 26-19. Let goes to a wide open Chris Capers who banks it home. Somebody missed the defensive assignment, Ken, because Florida, nobody was on Capers. Florida did a good job picking inside on Chad Kessler. Neville Austin got mixed up on who was going to take Dwayne Schintzes. Schintzes rolled out of there, and that left the opening up for the offense. There's a foul on Florida as they try to steal the ball. Chris Capers, I believe, will get the foul. Tony Mack will re-enter for Georgia, and Patrick Aaron comes in for Florida. Georgia inbounds to Anderson. 28-19, Gators with a nine-point lead. Gators now are employing the zone. 
They have switched to a zone defense here. Anderson goes to the top of the key to Hamilton, does not shoot. Left side to Anderson, long jump shot is no good. Rebound to the Gators and Capers, he outlets to Lett. Lett's got one man to beat, he tries and he is fouled. Patrick Hamilton gets the foul for Georgia, that'll be his second. Can I think what Florida's managed to do here is they've managed to take Georgia out of the pace of their game. Georgia more or less setting things up, setting things up. What Florida's done with the press, I think, is to get the game to a more up-tempo kind of style. And that is their style of game. The game that Georgia wanted to play last year was not able to. The game they're trying to get used to playing now. But Georgia's offense has kind of cooled off now. They hit five of their first seven shots, but now that they've cooled off and started missing the outside shots, I think that's why Norm Sloan is going to the zone defense and let them continue to shoot outside until they prove that they can hit it. Clifford led at the foul line. He has two. His first one is no good. Vernon Maxwell, who had gone out for a short breather, comes back, and Ronnie Montgomery gets a rest. Second shot by Lett is no good. Georgia gets the rebound. Kessler, 28-19, 8.50 left. Here's Anderson. Does not shoot. Again, the Gators employ the zone. The ball is knocked out of bounds. Norm Sloan, you can see, giving instructions to his defense. Bulldog ball. Anderson, the trigger man. Back to Anderson in the corner. They go in the paint. It is knocked away. Loose ball, scrapped up, and the Gators get it. Capers Look out to Maxwell. Maxwell slams it home. And a foul. Norm Sloan likes it. Remember last time against Auburn, Vernon got a break, took off down court with it, but then just laid it in nice and easy. Not this time, baby. The Gators have opened up an 11-point lead. The O-Dome fans loving it as well. Fellow Neville Austin, his second. Maxwell for the three-point play, it's good. If you can believe it, that was only Maxwell's second slam of the year. Vernon has 15, they go underneath. Ball is blocked. It'll be Georgia ball. Anderson will trigger it in for Georgia. The Bulldogs have gone stone cold. Lett knocks it out of bounds. The Gators swarming defensively. 31-19, Florida by 12. Their biggest lead. In the lane, Kessler's got three guys around him, still makes the shot. Nice play by Alec Kessler. But Florida did a good job on collapsing when the ball got into Kessler in the paint. They did a good job helping out on D. Gators by 10, 31-21, 7.55 left first half. An impressive half for the Gators thus far. Seeing that his offense has gone cold, Coach Durham's about to put Milt Blakely into the game. Right side jumper, no good. Georgia's Tony Mack gets the loose rebound. He'll bring it up. Again, the Bulldogs very patient offensively. Mack right side out to Anderson, tries a three-point shot. It is no good. And Vernon Maxwell gets the rebound for Florida, and the Gators run. Maxwell, one bounce to Aaron. Layin is no good. The tip is no good. Loose ball. Anderson gets it for Georgia. Rolls it down to Hamilton. Hamilton against Sitches. The reverse layup is good. Nice play by Patrick Hamilton. I think Dwayne was kind of caught between a rock and a hard place. Didn't know what to do with a man coming down on the wing. Hamilton's first two points, 31-23. Florida by eight. Sitches top of the key. Gives to Maxwell, he drives. Aaron had the shot, didn't take it. Lett will take it left side, it's good. Clifford's first two, 33-23, Florida. Here's Hamilton. Again, setting things up. Florida in the 2-1-2 zone. Nice pass underneath to Kessler. Here's little bank shot is no good. Kessler hustles for the rebound, knocked away. The Gators get the ball back. No call, Kessler looking for one. Again, Florida with a good job of collapsing on Kessler when he got the ball. And Patrick Aaron, the short jumper left side is good. Aaron's first two points. Everybody getting to the act now. You know, getting suspended was probably the best thing that ever happened to Patrick Aaron's career. He's played more. He's played more quality minutes since his suspension. He's really become a valuable addition. Clifford Lett will get the foul, his second. 
The Gators make some substitutions, so does Georgia. Livingston Chapman and Dwayne Davis come in. Patrick Aaron and Dwayne Sinchus will sit down. Milt Blakely's about to come in, but he's going to be in for Patrick Hamilton, so it'll be after the shot. Patrick Hamilton will shoot the one and one. First shot is good. Hamilton's got three. 35-24 in favor of Florida. Second shot is no good. Montgomery rebounds for Florida. Ronnie pushes it up, has it knocked out of bounds. It'll be Florida ball. The Bulldogs will get two men in the game now. They get in Milt Blakely, a 5'8 senior guard, and Jody Patton, a 6'4 freshman. They'll come in. Willie Anderson and Patrick Hamilton will get the rest. The two starting Georgia guards get a breather. Hugh Durham with some good freshman guards he recruited this past year. Jody Patton's one of them, averaging six points a game off the bench. Freshman out of Tifton. Let guarded by Tony Mack. Long cross-court pass to Montgomery. Ronnie looks, nice pass inside. Turnaround jumper, good. Clifford Lett. Gets his fourth point, 37-24. Gators by 13, their longest lead. Right side jumper is good, so right away, Jody Patton, the freshman, not afraid to answer back. The jumper good. He's got two, 36-27 Gators. That's why he's in there. He's a freshman, but he's not intimidated. He comes in for instant offense. And a traveling call against the Gators, so the Bulldogs will get the ball on the turnover. 540 left in the first half. Burdett inbounds to Tony Mack. Mack waits for a guard to take over, and that'll be Milt Blakely. Blakely's guarded by Lett momentarily in the Gator zone. Blakely and Burdett play catch here. Kessler's got it. Right side, Patton jumps it up again. It's no good. Rebound fought for. Tony Mack gets it. It's out of bounds. It'll be... Georgia ball. The crowd not in agreement. Blakely inbounds for Georgia, but before that, Patrick Aaron gets back in the game for the Gators. He'll replace Clifford Lett. Lett some quality minutes for the Gators. Blakely has it tipped away, and Maxwell gets it for the Gators. I can't see having 5'8", Milt Blakely take the ball out underneath. Montgomery to the right side of Maxwell off of Davis's hands, and the Gators will turn it over. So both teams playing turnover here at the five-minute mark of the half. Norm Sloan a bit concerned with that. Here is Blakely. Montgomery picks him up now. And the Gators will settle back in the zone. There's a three-point shot by Blakely. It's good. His first points of the game. Georgia has crawled to within seven, 37-30. Blakely went for the steal, did not get it. Right side pass to Maxwell. Out to Montgomery. His shot is no good off of everything. But Davis scraps for the rebound and puts it in. Just hustle. That's all that is. Patton. Throws it up, no good. Chapman rebounds. Kessler in Chapman's face. But the Gators keep the basketball. This is always an intense game. Remember two years ago up in Athens, a big fight got started. Tempers ran high here in this game last year too. Maxwell, right side jumper, good. Maxwell, the veteran, got Patton, the freshman. Patton turned his head just a second and Maxwell drilled it. 41-30, Gators by 11. Blakely in the corner to Tony Mack. Back to Blakely, back to Mack. His jumper is good. Mack, after starting off hot early with 11, 41-32, Gators by nine. The pace is quickened here, three and a half left, first half. And now we have a foul call on Dwayne Davis. Davis and Kessler going at it down under. Davis the first foul. Davis has been doing a good job on Kessler down under. His quickness on defense has been really an asset. 
Gators make some substitutions here. Chapman and Davis will sit down. Capers in the ball game now, as is Dwayne Sinches for the Gators. Sinches, after his 23-point effort Wednesday night, has yet to score. Kessler at the line. The sophomore has six points. His shot hits the front rim, no good, but Georgia gets the rebound. Burdett. Florida didn't have its big people in, so they got out-rebounded. They go inside, nice pass to Mack, who throws it up and good. Mack has 13 to lead Georgia, 41-34. The Gators by seven. Norm Sloan is anxious now as his Gators have just a seven-point lead. Montgomery dribbles to the paint inside the Sitches. He lays it up with the left hand and good. So, Ken, just as you say, Sitches hasn't scored. Perhaps he heard you his first two, 43-34. Burdett passes over the right wing, and Patton will save it as nobody was home. Patton dribbles out of trouble to the foul line. Burdett dribbles in. His shot is knocked away. The Gators get the ball. Maxwell, right side, stops in the lane. Nice pass. The layup is no good, but a foul. It'll be against Georgia. Will be on Milt Blakely. Florida does not have its big team, and they're using the quick team, and that's what they've got to do is what they just did, force a turnover, run the court because the only really huge guy that's in there now is Dwayne Shinsa, so they're probably going to get beat on the, uh, on the boards. And I'll tell you what, Vernon Maxwell ran the break well that time. He brought the ball up the wing. He saw Montgomery cutting in the middle, got the pass right to him. Ronnie got fouled by Blakely, his first. Montgomery has two points. First one is no good. The Gator woes continue at the foul line. Hugh Durham exhorts his team. They're down 43-34. Crowd quiet, second shot is good. Timeout on the floor, 2.33 left. Gators on top by 10, 44-34. We'll take a break and come back to the O'Connell Center. This is Cox Cable 8 Sports. If you're hungry and thirsty, your energy's low. There's only one place to go. Eat it, Joe's. Eat it, Joe's Deli. Jump in the Joe's. You be Gator says to be a real Gator, you got to look like a real Gator. Gator clothes in the only place to get tees and sweats from the institution comic strip. Shop University Book and Supply. The first name in copiers probably isn't the copier name you think of first. But it's a name that links speed and performance with uncompromising reliability and makes innovative technology simple to use. For meeting the needs of every size business, business relies on the most popular copiers in America. From personal to high-performance copiers, the choice is Canon. Call Southern Copy Products at 376-8058. Unofficially for the Florida Gators, Vernon Maxwell leads things with 17 first-half points. No other Gator is scoring in double figures. A guy who really didn't get much playing time in the first half was Pat Lawrence. Lawrence, uh, after playing early, Patrick Aaron played much of the second, uh, much of the latter stages of the first half and did quite a good job. Georgia has been led by Tony Mack. Mack with 13 points unofficially, and Mack hitting those uh, fairly early in the game. But again, Georgia uh, only down by eight on the road at the half. They're right in this basketball game. Another key to this game, I think, it, we, saw, we talked about Willie Anderson coming in. But Florida has done a very good job on Anderson. He's only scored four points. He's got one foul. So that has been a, another key to Florida's success. They've shut him down. Tony Mack has done the bulk of their scoring, along with Alec Kessler, who has six. Let's take a look at what we might see in the second half. I think we're going to see a lot of the same types of things as far as defense. I think uh, Norm Sloan made a wise move in going to the zone because Georgia wasn't hitting a thing outside. And I think you might see them continue in the zone in the second half. I think they'll come out in the zone again. 
And if they play good collapsing help out defense like they did when they went to the zone in the first half, then if Georgia starts getting hot and starts hitting the shots again, then they can go back to the man-to-man -man and the press that got them to a big lead in the first half. As far as Georgia's concerned, if you're in, if you're in uh, Hugh Durham's locker room, again, you're only down eight points, but your big guy, Willie Anderson, isn't doing a whole lot. Do you try to get the ball to him more? I think they're going to have to. No one, as we said, very few players in the SEC have the combination of quickness and speed and strength and height that Willie Anderson has. He's been quiet so far, only averaging, or he came in averaging 15 points. He's only scored four. I think they're going to get to go to him in the second half if they're going to make a run at it. At the half, the Gators on top, 46 to 38. And as you can see, the entertainment here is pleasing to the crowd. Ken and I will be back with more activity in the second half. The Gators on top, 46-38, as the first half comes to a close. We'll take a break and come back with the second half tip-off. This is Cox Cable 8 Sports. The NFL on ESPN was a smash hit this season on Cox Cable. In February, Cox Cable and our local NFL sponsors are teaming up to send a lucky fan and a guest to the Pro Bowl in Honolulu. That's right, you could win airfare and hotel accommodations for a week in Hawaii. To register, stop by Stringfellow Supply, Santa Fe Auto Parts, Smith Crocker & Company, Clyde's Tire on 13th Street, or Westgate Mobile Homes. The drawing will be on January 18th, so register today for your chance to see the Pro Bowl in Honolulu, Hawaii. Do people really watch the programs that cable delivers? In the last seven years, over 50% of Americans have turned on and tuned in to cable TV. In 1987 alone, cable subscribers will pay over $12 billion to watch cable programs. Here's proof that Americans want greater choice. Cable delivers that choice. While broadcast chairs have declined, cable continues to grow. Advertise on cable. It's changing the way people watch television. Call your local cable operator today. We are back in the O'Connell Center. The Florida Gators at the half on top of the Georgia Bulldogs, 46 to 38. The Gators, Vernon Maxwell, very impressive in the first half with 17 points. Vernon, after not shooting very well his past uh, two or three games, all of a sudden coming alive here in the first half. Maxwell in the field, including a couple of play Florida very well. Ed Murphy, one of the better coaches in the SEC, will have that game for you a week from tonight at 10.30 on the Cox Cable 8 Sports Television Station. That's next Saturday. Ken Tomash now will be back with the Gators and the Ole Miss Rebels. Very important game here for the Gators. They are 0-1 in league play. You do not want to start off 0-2 in any type of league competition. Georgia comes in at one up and one down. We're set to go here in the second half. Georgia will get the basketball. You know we're just underway when Willie Anderson's jersey is tucked in. That won't be that way for long. <laughs> it's true. Somehow everybody else in the court manages to keep it in. Kessler has the ball tied up, but a pass inside to Anderson. He lays it in and a foul. So we said Willie Anderson had to be more of a factor than his four points in the first half. He's taking the initiative right away. 46-40, the Bulldogs have crawled to within six. The foul is on Livingston Chapman. Chapman's first foul, team's first foul. Anderson can bring the Bulldogs to within five. He does not, though, as Cinches rebounds. Long outlet pass to Maxwell. Maxwell, one on three, stops, gives it back to Lawrence. Gators will set up now with Montgomery. Lawrence right side, Cinches, jump shot, good. Dwayne has four, 48-40, Florida by eight. Georgia playing a man-to-man, -man, and Eric Burdett was trying to handle with Shinsis that time as Kessler got caught out of position. The Gators come out defensively. Left side jumper is good by Patrick Hamilton. Hamilton has five. Once again, Georgia within six, 48-42. Montgomery, the one bounce to Maxwell. Left corner to Montgomery, nice drive to the baseline, looks for help, right side Lawrence, three-point attempt is short, air ball. Burdett rebounds for Georgia. And Norm Sloan gives Pat Lawrence a look as he goes back down court. Bulldogs trail by six, they've got the ball. Gators once again coming out in that man defense. 
Tony Mack, shot is no good, but a foul. Pat Lawrence is having a tough time handling Tony Mack, and Norm Sloan will go to the bench immediately and send in Patrick Aaron. A short day's work for the senior out of Crestview. He's up against Tony Mack, and Mack, 6'5", playing a good small forward, but he's also got a lot of good moves. He showed one there. Pat Lawrence just caught out. It had nothing to do but foul Tony Mack. Lawrence's third foul. He sits down. Aaron in the game. Tony Mack at the line. First shot is no good. Mack, in case you didn't know, is a Florida native. He's from Tampa. Former teammate in high school of Dwayne Shinsis. Second shot by Mack is good. Average. Georgia within 5, 48, 43. Sorry, Steve, he averaged 41 points a game his senior year, Dwayne Shinsis' junior year, and they went to the state Final Four. Aaron with the ball. Out of Montgomery. Gators look for the good shot. Chapman near the foul line, right side of Montgomery. He drives, his shot is good. Ronnie Montgomery's not known for doing that, but he found the opening and decided to go for it. Ronnie has five. Gators by seven, 50-43. They give it to Mack Lowe against Aaron. He'll get some help on the double team from Maxwell. Anderson guarded by Maxwell. Kessler sets the pick. Anderson spins in the lane. Nice pass underneath the Kessler lays it in and the foul. Shit. Kessler Start, gets his eighth point. I started to say Kessler didn't do a real good job of setting the pick, but when he rolled off it after Maxwell got around him, he was open for the pass from Mack. The, the foul is on Dwayne Sitches, his third, Hugh Durham. Exhorting his team, they pulled it within five. Cinches will leave, and Dwayne Davis will re-enter for Florida. Kessler's foul shot in and out, tapped around, and a foul over the back. That'll be Eric Burdett. His second foul, no question there, that Burdett over the back of Livingston Chapman. The sophomore's second foul, team's first foul. 17 and a half left in the game. Gators by five, 50-45. Here's Ronnie Montgomery. The one bounce almost thrown away, but Maxwell gets it back. Montgomery has the pass taken away. George's ball. This is Tony Mack. Spin move. This time he's fouled by Patrick Aaron. I tell you, Ken, Tony Mack is presenting matchup problems for the Gators. Well, because of his size and because of his quickness, he's playing small forward, but he can handle the ball pretty well, almost like a guard, because he had to handle the ball a lot in high school. And when Ronnie well, Montgomery is trying to guard him, that is a mismatch, and even really Patrick Aaron, who's inexperienced, still only a sophomore. Aaron leaves, let returns, they inbound to Kessler, his shot is no good, rebound by Anderson is put in. Anderson has eight, and the Bulldogs now are within three at 50-47 at the 17-minute mark. Montgomery dribbles right side, looks for help to Chapman. He drives in the paint. His shot is good. Good power move by Livingston Chapman. He has six. Long pass down court is out of bounds. Georgia throws it away, and the Gators get it back. They almost caught Florida asleep, and they were a little late getting back on D. But Anderson threw it away. 52-47, Florida. Maxwell and Anderson. They go to Chapman right side. Kessler grabs him. Turn around, jump shot by Chapman. It's good. Florida's Chapman doing a good eight. job on offense with a pick and roll, which they have to do against Georgia's man-to-man -to, -man to get Chapman open. They did that well that time, 54-47. The Gator lead is back to seven. They float one in right side to Anderson, has it knocked away. Montgomery comes up with a loose ball for the Gators. Long pass right side to Maxwell on the paint. His shot is no good, but he's fouled. Willie Anderson gets the foul. 
That'll be Anderson's second foul, and Maxwell goes to the line. This is a game of spurts. Georgia moved to within three. The Gators can now move it out to a nine-point lead. And the Anderson and Maxwell matchup, the two top two players in the voting preseason for SEC Player of the Year going at it here today so far. Maxwell has been a decisive leader. Vernon has 17 points. 18. 55-47, Florida. Second shot, good. Maxwell with 19, 56-47, Gators by nine. Long pass to Kessler, Davis guards him. Cordette will give to the guard, Hamilton. Georgia will set up, set up their offense. Now Florida back in that 3-2 zone. Could hurt them on the rebounding if they have to, but they're just gonna let Georgia shoot. And they tip it away, Davis comes up with a loose ball. Of course, you can avoid that by just getting the ball before they shoot it all. <laughs> Sometimes easier said than done. Hamilton to Maxwell. Chapman and Burnett go at each other. This is Lett looking for help. Gives it to Chapman. Chapman the spin move, the right hand shot no good. Ball is loose and Chapman hits the deck as Anderson rebounds for Georgia. Hamilton to Anderson. Hamilton tries the three pointer, it's no good. Hit nothing, rebound is fought for and Kessler is called for the foul. That's Kessler's third, and if he has to sit down, they'll have to bring Neville Austin back in, their other big man, and he's only a freshman. And the Gators continue to shuffle players in and out. Ronnie Montgomery and Chris Capers are in. Livingston Chapman will sit down. There's a timeout on the floor. 14.47 left in the second half, and the Gators are on top by nine. 56-47. I'll tell you something that I think Norm Stone has done very well today, two things. A, he has changed defense. He's just gone man-to-man. -man. He's employed the zone a couple of times, a 2-1-2, two, two, then a 3-2. Secondly, he is shuffling players in and out, trying to find the right combination, and when he finds it, he's sticking with that. Well, he's been lucky today in that the players he has brought in have been productive off the bench, unlike the game at Auburn where nobody scored off the bench. Patrick Aaron has played well off the bench, and as a result, he's seeing even more playing time off the bench. Clifford Lett has played well. Dwayne Davidson off the bench as he has been all year. Gator cheerleaders always entertain the crowd in the O'Connell Center. Do a fine job of that. You can see a part of the large crowd on hand. Norm Sloan, I'm sure, telling his team, hey, you got this lead. Let's play good defense. Let's continue to change things up. You're going to be all right. And he's used a lot of players. Chris Capers, who hasn't played much, has played some today. He's used a lot of Patrick Aaron today, too. Last year in the game against Georgia, he had 17 rebounds, and he's going to be out on the court as we come back from this timeout. We'll set the Gator lineup for you. Montgomery and Maxwell, Clifford Lett, Dwayne Davis, and Chris Capers. For Georgia, it'll be their original starting five. Willie Anderson, I didn't notice in the first half, he's got his thumb wrapped up in tape. Maybe he heard it in the first half, and that might have been part of the reason he only had four points. Now it's wrapped, and we'll see what he can do now. Anderson has eight at this point. Gators have the ball. Again, Georgia in the man-to-man. -man. Maxwell. Dribbles around, stops. Clifford Lett, top of the key. Right side to Montgomery. Inside pass is tipped away. Loose ball. Gators get it back. Capers hands to Montgomery. Maxwell tries to throw the pass, but it's thrown out of bounds. It'll be Georgia ball. And now it's Georgia doing a good job on the defensive end of things. So Florida is shooting better. 55% now for the game, 50% for Georgia. For the Gators, Dwayne Sinchis returns. Dwayne Davis will take a seat. Livingston Chapman will also check in for Florida, and Chris Capers will take a seat. 10,828 on hand today. A good crowd on a nasty day in Gainesville for some hot basketball. Patrick Hamilton, right side, still has the ball. Again, the Gators in the zone. Oh, 
Georgia, you can see their offense really change when the Gators go in the zone. They go to a very, very patient style offense. Use a lot of clock. I can't see having Alec Kessler outside the three-point line. Nope, but you can certainly see Tony Mack underneath where he's been a lot today. He's been trouble for Florida. 56-49, Florida by seven. Maxwell looks to drive left. Nice defense by Anderson. Jump shot short for Florida. Cinches will rebound. He puts it up. It is no good. Tap is no good. And we'll see what they call. Chapman will get the offensive foul, I believe. Dwayne put that one up before he was really ready. Probably could have put the ball on the floor and driven in. But he took the shot and missed. Chapman second foul. Now the Gators substitute once again. Pat Lawrence will come in for Clifford Lett. Pass had a tough day today. Three points and three personal fouls. 56-49 Florida, 13-15 left. Anderson right side, nobody picked him up, so he turns and jumps, no good. Cinches rebounds, Montgomery gets it, here come the Gators. Montgomery in the middle of the Lawrence, underneath, nice pass, and the layup is no good. Chapman gets the rebound, hit bank shot is good, and a foul. Pat had been having his troubles on offense himself. Dished it off a great pass to Maxwell, but Max was a little too far under the boards to make it work. Luckily, Chapman was there to stick it back in and draw the foul. Eric Burrett got the foul for Georgia. He now has three personal fouls. We'll see if Chapman can complete the three-point play. He does not. But Cinches gets the rebound. He has it knocked out of his hands, but a foul. Tony Mack not in agreement with the official's call, so Cinches gets the board and the Gators have more opportunities to score. Both teams now with five fouls in the second half. Sinchus at the line has four points. They shot good. 59-49, Gators lead Georgia. You can see the time, 12.59 left. Second shot, no good, but again the Gators get the rebound. Pat Lawrence and a foul is called on Patrick Hamilton. Well, they call it on Tony Mack. Two quick ones against Mack. It is on Mack. Non-shooting foul, but the Gators will get the ball back. Leading by 10. Lawrence will inbound. Chapman. And Hands Florida now in the bonus. That's right. All this with nearly 13 minutes left in the half. Foul is called underneath. Kessler is called for the foul. Livingston Chapman is an aggressive player on defense, especially when he's posting up a guy a little taller than he is, the center, Alec Kessler. It is an intentional foul call against Alec Kessler. That's also his fourth foul. And Florida will not only get the free throws, but under the new rule, they'll get the ball back. So it could turn out to be a big play. Now leading by 10, they could move it up even further. With 12.44 to go in the game, the Gators seemingly in command here on top 59-49. Let's run down the foul situation for you. For Georgia, Kessler with four. Burdett with three. For the Gators, Pat Lawrence, Clifford Lett, and Dwayne Cinches have three. Those are the players in foul trouble, but that Gator bench right there has to be a pretty happy group at this point. I doubt you'll also see Ken Alec Kessler in the game until perhaps the five minute mark or so. He's got to sit down with four fouls, you would think. And I'd imagine we'll have to see Neville Austin then, the freshman. The crowd, at this point, a happy Gator crowd. Florida needing to win this game to even the Southeastern Conference record at one and one. Georgia, six and five on the road. As you see, Steve Lombardozzi, second baseman for the world champion Minnesota Twins, being introduced to the home folks. Lombo, Lombo is sitting right behind us. Makes his home here in Gainesville during the offseason. He'll be having a, uh, a baseball camp at Buholtz High School that's going to be going on next weekend. He'll conduct. A lot of ex-skaters to be there. 
Got back to basketball. Hopefully the weather will be better than it is today. Chapman with the technical. Missed the first one. Misses the second one. But Florida will get the ball back. Georgia has started the second half hitting five of eight shots, so Florida will be dropping back into that zone again more than likely and waiting for Georgia to go cold as they did at the latter stages of the first half as Neville Austin checks back in and Kessler takes a seat. As you mentioned, Kenny, with the new rule on the intentional foul, the Gators get the ball back. Sinches passes in the lane to Chapman. He will commit the offensive foul, either he or Sinches. Let's see. They called Chapman for traveling. Took a little stutter step after he got the pass from, the pass from Shinsis. There is no foul. It'll be steps. Georgia gets the ball. So they came out pretty good there. No point scored against them. They trail by 10. Florida could have made a 10-point game, a 14-point game. It stays 10. This could be a six-point turnaround if the Bulldogs get a basket here. Austin hands to Anderson. He drives the baseline. His shot is good. That is indeed a possible six-point turnaround for the Georgia Bulldogs. Ball is knocked out of bounds. Gators will get it. Ronnie Montgomery. To Maxwell. Maxwell in the paint, lays it up, no good. The Bulldogs will get the rebound, knocked out of bounds. It'll still be Georgia ball. They trail 59-51, 12 minutes to go in the half. The Bulldogs can now cut it to a six-point lead. Now let's see how Florida matches up on D. Anderson again in the paint. His shot is blocked, but Hamilton gets it back. Florida back in the zone, waiting for Georgia to cool off. Left side to Anderson, nice pass to the baseline. Mack travels. So the Bulldogs turn it over, and the Gators get it back with 11 and a half to go in the game, and they lead 59-51. Hugh Durham not enamored with the officiating there. Maxwell to Sitches, right side to Montgomery. Ronnie will get it into Sitches. His little one-handed shot is good. Little jump hook by Sitches. Wayne with six, 61-51 Florida. Mack almost threw it away, but Hamilton gets it back for Georgia. And the paint to Burdett, he's surrounded. There you see that collapsing zone of Florida. 20 on the shot clock as the Gators play good defense. They're going to give Georgia the outside shot, but they really don't have their good outside shooters in. Austin with the move in the lane, his turnaround jumper is good. Austin's first two, 61-53. Georgia hanging tough, 10 and a half to go. Austin's a good story, born in London, England, raised in Auburn, Alabama. Freshman for Georgia. Shot inside is no good, but a foul. I believe Willie Anderson will get the foul. Foul on number 40, Willie Anderson, his third. Anderson now with three personal fouls, and Vernon Maxwell will head to the free throw line. Another key part of that Anderson-Maxwell matchup, as you said, Anderson with three fouls, Maxwell has none. So that could come into play down the stretch these last 10 minutes. Chris Capers enters the game for the Gators. Livingston Chapman will sit down. Max five out of five from the line. Now six for six. Max will now with 20 points to lead Florida. And the Gators lead 62-53. Second shot is good. Maxwell is zeroing in from the charity strike. 63-53. Gators now employ the press. Burdett Anderson. caught in the backcourt. Double team, here is Burdett. Burdett will have it stolen away, but oh, look at this. It goes to Mack on the tip. It's no good, knocked out of bounds. It'll Neville be Austin Gator Bowl. Over the top of Pat Lawrence. And now Austin has three fouls. Alec Kessler with four fouls. If they lose either or both of those two guys, it will really hurt them down the stretch as Florida should be able to exploit its height advantage if they get 
Dwayne Davis back in the ballgame. You saw Kessler sitting on the bench. He may be joined by others here soon. Pat Lawrence at the line for the one and one. This occurring with 10.06 left in the half. So Georgia definitely is in tough straights foul-wise. This is where Pat Lawrence can really do some damage, even if he's not shooting well, but he doesn't there. Hamilton with the ball for Georgia. Despite all their adversity, they're still just 10 down, 63-53. Nice move by Anderson. Look at that shot, it's good, and a foul. So it makes him so dangerous. He can do so much with the basketball. He's a forward playing guard, and he's playing guard very well. And now the Gators have a foul problem in that Dwayne Sinches has his fourth personal foul. He'll come out, and Livingston Chapman returns. You can see Hugh Durham going to his bench now. He'll send in Rod Cole, number 22, as Sinches leaves. Cole will get Tony Mack. Let's run down the foul situation here. Cinches, Lawrence, and Lett are in foul trouble for the Gators. Cinches with four, Lett and Lawrence with three for Georgia. Kessler four, Austin, Anderson, and Burdett with three. Anderson completes the three-point play. It is now 63-56 Florida. We have reached the 945 mark. Lawrence, over the timeline of Montgomery. Lawrence now picked up by Willie Anderson. And now we have a foul underneath. It'll be against Georgia. On Eric Burdett, that would be his fourth. Four, Eric Burdett, his fourth. So Burdett has four fouls. Burdett with four, Kessler with four, Cinches with four. This may be a game of attrition before it ends. Georgia has some good young players on the bench, but they're just that young players. They have like four freshmen. And if it comes down to a battle of numbers, Florida will win that. Capers at the line now with a one and one. No good. Anderson rebounds. Boy, if the Gators have had one weakness today, they cannot buy anything from the free throw line with the exception the of Maxwell. Burdett inside, his bank shot is no good. Tapped around, a foul is called. It'll be against Georgia. Or will it? It's on Eric Burdett, and he's gone. Eric Burdett will foul out. Burdett leaves with four points, all from the charity strike. So the first man to leave is Burdett at the 9.28 mark. Wouldn't surprise me, Ken, if more will follow. Austin, of course, with three. Kessler is on the bench with four. But still, Georgia only down seven with nine and a half minutes to play. Now, Hugh Durham has time to substitute a player and he is taking all the time he can at this point you see the officials awaiting but Durham has this right the crowd of course will get on the Georgia bench first things first for Florida Steve Chris Capers has got to hit both of these free throws Tony Mack will re-enter the game for Georgia. Not only would the free throws get the lead back up to nine, but it would have to give them a lift as they have been unable to hit anything from the line except for Vernon Maxwell. We'll see what Capers can do. Chris's shot good. He has three, and the Gators now lead 64-56, 9.28 to go in the game. Capers high, arching shot, good again. 65-56, Florida by nine. Hamilton double team for the moment and a foul on Ronnie Montgomery. Norm Sloan not happy with that call. Montgomery's second foul. Now the Gators have their seventh team foul, so this could be at the end a battle of free throw shooting. And Florida would hope to have to hope that they could shoot better than they have to this point in the game. One and one now for Patrick Hamilton. Hamilton has five. His shot is no good. Rebound is tapped, and Anderson will get it for Georgia. And a foul on Florida. Vernon Maxwell will get this one. Only his first foul 
The officials today are rather liberal in the use of the whistle. Wayne Davis comes back for Florida. Chris Capers will leave. Willie Anderson from the line. Crawls one home. Willie Anderson at the line. Anderson has 14. Gators lead by eight, 65-57, 9-17 left. Second shot, no good. Davis rebound. That's why Davis is in there. Florida got beat on the boards the last free throw miss. 65-57, the Gator lead is eight. Montgomery, inside pass to Davis. It is saved by Dwayne, barely. Montgomery to Chapman, a foul has gotta be called there, and it is. I would think Austin would get that foul. He does. That's four fouls on Neville Austin. Three players now have four fouls. Cinches for Florida, Kessler and Austin for Georgia. Hugh Durham knows the mathematics here are not good for him. I think he'll stay with Austin until he fouls out and then bring Kessler in. Davis at the line, no good, but Pat Lawrence gets the rebound. And the Gators have a new 45 to work with. Chapman in the lane, gets knocked down, no call. Inside to Davis, his shot is good, rolled in. Davis with nine. 66-57 and apparently a foul away from the ball against Livingston Chapman. That's his third. So the Bulldogs will get the one and one on their end, trailing by nine with 8.37 left. So he said this game is always aggressive, a fight two years ago. Whenever the Bulldogs and Gators bang heads, it's always an aggressive game. Neville Austin, the 6'10 freshman at the line. He's from Auburn, Alabama. Shot good. Well, that's not actually from there, but as you mentioned, he was born in England. Austin's second shot is good. And a substitution now for the Gators. Clifford Lett will come in for Vernon Maxwell to give Vernon the blow. 67-59, 8.37 left. Here's Montgomery. Pace has slowed down somewhat here on both sides. Chapman almost threw it away, but Lett very deftly gets it back. Cross court pass to Lawrence. Jump shot by Montgomery, no good. Rebound, tapped around. Georgia will get it, Tony Mack. Here's Cole. Again, the Bulldogs hanging around. Pass in the paint to Mack, he's triple teamed. Austin right side to Anderson. Anderson the spin move, he'll jump it. It's no good. Rebound, Let will get it for Florida. Knocked away and stolen by the Bulldogs. Tony Mack does that, his one-hander is no good. Lawrence rebounds for the Gators. Norm Sloan will send Dwayne Sitches in quickly. The Gators have the basketball with 7.40 to go and an eight-point lead. And Montgomery calls for a timeout. 7.33 left, Gators on top, 67.59. We'll take a break and come back for the final seven and a half here from the O'Connell Center. This is Cox Cable 8 Sports. The first name in copiers probably isn't the copier name you think of first, but it's a name that links speed and performance with uncompromising reliability and makes innovative technology simple to use. For meeting the needs of every size business, business relies on the most popular copiers in America. From personal to high performance copiers, the choice is Canon. Call Southern Copy Products at 376-8058. Building a great tradition takes determination and a commitment to excellence, and that's why Gary Massey Chevrolet is succeeding at building a great tradition. Get the sleek look and sporty feel of the car of the 80s, the new 88 Chevy Beretta. And if you prefer the convenience of a four-door, the 88 Corsica is for you. You'll be a winner at Gary Massey Chevrolet. That's the day, Chevrolet. Ooh, ooh, yeah. 
State, Georgia, six and five away from home coming into this game, looking for their seventh win in 12 tries on the road. And when you consider some of the places they've played in the last month, that's pretty good. They played three games in Tokyo at a tournament in Japan. They went three and zero over there. Then they played three games out in Hawaii. So in December, they did a lot of frequent flyer miles they racked up. They went one and two out in the Chaminade Classic over Christmas in Hawaii. So six and five when you do all that traveling isn't too bad. The Gators have the basketball now. Vernon Maxwell's returned to the game. He's back in. Pat Lawrence inside to Davis. His turnaround jumper no good. Rebound is fought for. A foul is called. It'll be against Georgia. Rod Cole gets the foul for Georgia, his first. Vernon Maxwell that time going low to help out on the boards and got fouled. Maxwell has 21, now 22. He's been absolutely perfect from the free throw line. 68-59, Florida. Second shot is good. 23 for Maxwell, 69-59. He's, He's in a groove from the line. Now Florida shooting 52%. And as we said, Georgia has cooled down now 49% after starting off hot. That's why Florida's in that zone. Tony Mack in the right corner. The one bounce to Anderson. Clock is down to the seven minute mark now. Anderson will jump, but his shot is no good. Georgia fights for the rebound. They will save it, apparently. It's going to be a jump ball, more or less, and the Gators get it back. Pat Lawrence, the crowd, helping the Gators on. This game is getting rather aggressive now. Lawrence across the timeline. The Gators have the ball and a 10-point lead. Lett had it slapped out, and a pushing foul is called against Clifford Lett, I think. I think Tony Mack did a good job of acting on that. There's no question there was contact, but I think he did a good job of embellishing it. That is the case on the foul. Let's third foul, and the Bulldogs will have the one and one on the other end. They say let pushed off when driving to the basket. Ronnie Montgomery will return for the Gators. He'll get Clifford Lett. Let leaves with four. Tony Mack on the line for Georgia now with a one and one. His shot is good. He's their best free throw shooter, 82% coming in. Mack's got 17, 69-60, Florida. Second one, good. 69-61, six and a half left. Lawrence with the ball for the Gators, top of the key to Montgomery. Montgomery looks for help, still looks, gets into the corner to Lawrence. Cinches gets it, turnaround jumper, no good. Ball is fought for, no good, and Florida will be called for the foul. Florida had a big advantage there. Tony Mack trying to go up against his old teammate, Dwayne Shinsis, but Dwayne was, really didn't get the kind of shot that he wanted to get. With that kind of advantage on Mack, he probably should have put the ball on the floor and drove to the hoop. Davis will get his second foul, and once again, Georgia goes to the line. Neville Austin with the one and one. Hugh Durham pensively watches his team try to get back to within six. Austin's shot is no good. Davis gets the rebound. The Gators have an eight-point lead, and the basketball with six minutes left. Maxwell to the baseline. Pass the cinches, didn't get it. Now he gets it, turns it in to two points. Dwayne was a little surprised to get that one, I think. Cinches with nine, 71-61, Georgia. Trailing by 10, has the ball. Did a good job there hounding Mack when he got the basketball. In the corner, it's kicked by Cinches, and Georgia will get the ball back. Clock becoming a factor now, 541 left, as you see, and the Gators enjoy the 10-point lead. 
The inbound. Mack will shoot it. It's no good. Davis rebounds. Here come the Gators. Maxwell dribbling through traffic. Still has it. Maxwell dishes off to Lawrence, and the Gators now will regroup with Montgomery. The one bounce to Vernon. Cinches to Lawrence. In the middle to Lawrence. He's fouled by Neville Austin. That will send Austin to the bench with five. So Austin will join Eric Cordette on the Georgia bench, and I would think now with 519 left, you will probably see Alec Kessler. And that is the case. Wayne Cinches at the line for Florida, the one and one. His shot is good. Cinches from double figures now with 10. And the Gator lead is double figures at 11, 72, 61, 519 thing, left. One thing about Dwayne is for a big man, he really doesn't go to the line as often as he should, but he is an excellent shooter once he gets there. Such a second shot good, 73, 61. The Gator bench, Chris Capers, Patrick Aaron, and company, hoping to get their chance. They go inside, pass is knocked away. And the Gators get the ball. Here's Davis to Cinches. Davis almost walked. But they get it to Montgomery, who will bring it up for the Gators. Under five minutes to go. Things looking pretty bleak for Georgia at this point. Maxwell to Lawrence. Into Cinches. Out to Maxwell. Maxwell at the foul line. Left side Montgomery. He'll pass to Cinches. His shot is no good, but Davis stuffs it home. That brings the crowd to its feet. Puts Florida up by 14, and Georgia have to take a timeout. The Gator fans on their feet. Davis brings the life with a slam. 4.26 left in the game, and the Gators enjoy a 14-point margin. They lead 75-61. We'll take a break and come back to the Gator Band and the O'Connell Center. This is Cox Table 8 Sports. Stop! Don't buy that car! That's right, because Regency Hyundai has just opened a brand new store here in Gainesville, Florida. And Regency Hyundai has a parking lot full of Hyundais to choose from. We have three models under $6,000 and six models under $7,000. And brand new Hyundais as low as $52.95. But you must hurry. With prices this low, they won't last long. So remember, you can purchase a brand new Hyundai for as low as $52.95. Where? Regency Hyundai here in Gainesville, Florida. The big story this morning is the announcement just moments away of the nominees for the prestigious Ace Awards. The brightest star. Win or not, I'm thrilled. The hottest production. It's great to watch. The greatest events. It's the Emmys and the Oscars and the Golden Globes all rolled into one. These are the faces of Ace. See them all on January 24th on the Ace Awards. Ace, the awards for cable excellence. Sunday at 9, 8 central on HBO. The Georgia Bulldog bench, not a happy one now. 4.26 to go. They trail 75-61. They do have the ball. Hugh Durham exhorting his team on. Anderson right corner out to Hamilton. Kessler is going to be fouled, I think, by Pat Lawrence. That is Pat's fourth foul. Don't forget, next Saturday, we'll have the replay of the Gators and the Ole Miss Rebels. Ken Tomash and I back right here. Game time, 10.30 on Cox Cable 8. Kessler's first shot, good. He's got nine, 75-62. Norm Sloan looks at four minutes and 13 seconds to go. Second shot is no good. Dwayne Davis rebounds. Here's Vernon Maxwell. Maxwell dribbles through traffic. Again dribbles through traffic and almost made a great shot. The slam is no good, but laid in, I think, by Cinches. It is. That's teamwork. Maxwell took it one-on-one -on -one when he couldn't do it. Dwayne Davis tried when he couldn't. Dwayne Cinches was there. 77-62. Cinches with 13. Inside to Anderson. He is fouled, and the basket is good. 
What a great individual move, Ken, by Willie Anderson. Anderson, as we said, had to be a factor if Georgia was going to make a run in the second half. And he has after just four first half points. He's come on here in the second stanza. Dwayne Davis got the Gator foul, his third. 3.43 left, 77-64, Florida by 13. Now by 12. The Bulldogs now begin to pick up in the Gator backcourt. Montgomery double teamed. Gets it to Maxwell. And he threw it away. That's the closest I've come to a basketball since high school. <laughs> Some of the Gator faithful here hoping that they can get their team a win today. They need it Southeastern Conference wise. And just as far as a 15th ranking in the AP poll is concerned. Left side, the shot is blocked away by Dwayne Davis. Well, he's played a spectacular game off the bench. He's not the biggest guy on this team, but he is the best leaper. He must have a vertical leap of over 36 inches or so. Really got up in the air on Jody Patton. He was standing pretty far away from Patton when Jody released the shot, but he knocked it up into about the 10th row. 3.15 to go. Georgia trails by 12. Kessler, the jumper, no good. Florida will rebound. It's tipped up now. The Gators do get it. Montgomery leads the break to Maxwell, who didn't have the shot and wisely will go back to regroup. The Gators don't need a turnover now. Maxwell again throws it away. Orm Sloan, you can see, hands folded. Not much you can do. 2.51 to go. Georgia can pull to within 10. They've got Gators the three-point the man, Milt Blakely, in. And Patton. Both to, excellent three-point shooters. To Mac inside, it's off Cinch's leg. Georgia gets the ball back. 2.40 to go. Here, I just can't see having Milt Blakely take the ball out underneath. I agree. That time it worked. Kessler will jump it up. It is in and out. Cinches grabs the rebound. Looks for help. Gets it to Maxwell. Here's Montgomery. 2.20 left. Gators own a 12-point lead. You would think the Gators would milk the clock at this point. There you see. 2.10 counting. Gators by 12. Maxwell the three-pointer. No good. But the rebound to Dwayne Davis again. He has really hurt Georgia on the boards, both from the offensive and defensive end. They don't want to foul Maxwell. But they do. Blakely the foul. I was about to say, if Georgia's going to look for somebody to foul, probably Dwayne Davis, but not Roberta Maxwell. And Max is in a groove from the line, nine for nine. Well, I guess if you play law of averages, you would think Maxwell's due to miss. Vernon, the senior, Hugh Holt High School in Gainesville. 77-65, a minute 56 to go. Shot is good. 24 for Maxwell. 78-65. Second shot. Oh, no good. Well, I can Lakeland. put away the record book now. I was just going to look to see what the record was for free throws without a miss. <laughs> Three-point shot is good by Tony Mack. Mack has been Georgia's big weapon today, along with Willie Anderson. 78-68. Montgomery is double-teamed. He gets it up to Maxwell. Cinches will help out as Georgia is hawking the basketball. Not only does Georgia have to foul, they have to avoid the intentional foul because Florida will get the ball back. And they have to foul immediately. And they're not doing that. Anderson now, the hack. He's called for his fourth foul. A minute and 20 to go. The Gators own a 78-68 lead. There's Anderson. Who has scored many points in the second half after just a four-point effort in the first half. Norm Sloan. Now we'll see his team shoot free throws. It's fought for, and we have... A foul against Georgia. It'll be Jody Patton on the push-off foul. 
Both Patton and Davis were going for it. And Patton, it was a good call. Patton gave Davis the elbow. But again, I, I think, Ken, the key there, Dwayne Davis kept the ball alive. He has done that on both ends of the floor on the glass. He really has played a spectacular game for the Gators in terms of his rebounding and in terms of just getting the key basket, the key play when he needs to. Now he has a chance to do some more damage from the line. Dwayne shot no good. Willie Anderson rebounds. Clock down to a minute 15 to go. Norm Sloan directing his defense now. Right side, jump shot is no good. Georgia gets the rebound, Patton gets it. His shot is blocked. And who gets the basketball? It's loose. It's still loose, still fought for. Kessler gets it for Georgia. Kessler shovels it to Mack. He is fouled. No, he takes steps. Good call. Florida sure not acting like a team that's up by 10. Pat Lawrence was going for that ball like Florida was down three with a minute to play. 56 seconds to go. Maxwell, Hounded, gets it to Montgomery. Ronnie shoots it up to Pat Lawrence, to Cinches. Here is Dwayne Davis, he is fouled. The shot good. That should do it. You know, Florida's gonna win this game by about 10, 12 or so, but that's really not gonna tell the story of this game. They have really earned a victory over a very tough, tough Georgia team who has played extremely well on the road. And there's an intentional foul call as well against Jody Patton. The Gator fans loving it here in the O'Connell Center. 46 seconds to go. The Gators up 80 to 68. We'll take a timeout and return to the O'Connell Center. The Gators on top, 80 to 68. This is Cox Cable 8 Sports. At Blunt Rollerson Honda, you can drive the best for less. With no down payment, you can drive this 1988 Accord LX, fully equipped with air, power windows and locks, tilt steering, cruise control, and stereo for only $213 per month. With no down payment, you can drive this 88 Prelude for only $198 per month. Or how about this 88 Civic Hatchback for only $126 per month? You can be driving one of 140 new Hondas available with no down payment. So beat the price increase and hurry to Blunt Rollerson Honda. The first name in copiers probably isn't the copier name you think of first. But it's a name that links speed and performance with uncompromising reliability and makes innovative technology simple to use. For meeting the needs of every size business, business relies on the most popular copiers in America. From personal to high-performance copiers, the choice is Canon. Call Southern Copy Products at 376-8058. The Gators have an 80-68 lead. 46 seconds to go, and Dwayne Davis at the foul line makes his first shot. Davis has 14 points. He'll still stay there. His second shot is no good. The intentional foul is the reason why Davis gets the other shot. But because of the intentional foul, the Gators will get the basketball back. Pat Lawrence will inbound. Montgomery is fouled by Milt Blakely. It's all Georgia can do now, Ken. Remember the game last year here in the O'Connell Center, two years ago. Georgia put up a good battle like they're doing today, and uh, Florida sealed it down the stretch with some free throws, especially one by Ronnie Montgomery with just seconds to play. Florida with a chance to stick a nail in the coffin again at the line. Ronnie Montgomery at the line. Ronnie's got five. His shot is no good, and we have a foul on Dwayne Cinches. And Dwayne, Dwayne did a good will job foul keep, out. Did a, I'm sorry, Steve. Did a good job of keeping the ball alive, but in the process, fouled his man and fouled out of the game. Cinches fouls out with 13 points. He becomes the third player to foul out the first for Florida. Cinches gets a nice hand as he sits down next to Norm Sloan. 41 seconds left. A reminder, approximately a half hour after this game, Lady Gators take on the Lady Bulldogs. At the line, Tony Mack. Mack with 21 points. His shot is no good. Ball is tapped around, and the Gators will get it. Here's Maxwell. Maxwell, long pass to Chapman, who saves it to Davis. Davis slams it home. And a foul on Davis. But the shot will count. Wayne Davis of this game can now 16 points and 14 rebounds. What a game this kid has played from St. Pete. 
sat out a year because of academic problems, but he's come back, used that year off to make himself a better, more mature player. Coming in as a freshman now, he'll have three years of eligibility after this. He's gonna be a great, great player. 83-68, the Gators, Jody Patton at the line. His shot is no good. Maxwell with the rebound, and he is fouled. 30 seconds left, and the Gators will win their first Southeastern Conference game of the year. They'll go to 10 and four on the year. Next week, the Gators have the state of Mississippi to play. They'll play at Mississippi State, and then back here in the O'Connell Center against Mississippi on Saturday, and we'll have that game for you on the replay beginning at 10.30. Ken Tomash and I will bring that game to you from the O'Connell Center here in Gainesville. Mike Heron has checked in for Georgia. He's a good story, a former walk-on, earned himself a scholarship with his good play off the bench. Maxwell's foul shot, good. Willie Anderson sits down for Georgia. A nice game for him, 17 points for the senior from Atlanta. Maxwell's second shot is good. Vernon's got 26 to lead Florida. 12 out of 13 from the line. 85-68. Georgia has to shoot the ball. Mack does the smart thing. A three-pointer is no good. The rebound is tapped around, and who's got it? The Gators do. And a foul. I believe it'll be against Mike Heron. 14 seconds left. They give the, the uh, foul to Patton is third. I think Ken unquestionably, the two top players in the game, for Florida at least, Vernon Maxwell and Dwayne Davis, although the Gators will have others in double figures, Dwayne Cinchius, Livingston Chapman. Good team effort today, something Florida needed. Something they didn't get against Auburn. Good bench scoring. Davis's points coming off the bench. Patrick Aaron playing some good minutes off the bench. Montgomery's foul shot, good. He has 6, 86, 68. Florida with his biggest lead of 18. Montgomery's second one, good. 87, 68. Blakely. Flocked down to 10 seconds. Blakely launches one, no good. Mack still fighting for Georgia. Gets the rebound, his shot is no good. Goaltending call. Tony Mack gets credit for the basket. Mack with 23. And that is the ball game. The Florida Gators move their record to one and one in the SEC with a convincing 87 to 70 win over the Georgia Bulldogs. The Gators go in a happy group as opposed to the other night when they lost to Auburn. Georgia, by the way, falling to a mark of one and two. I think Ken Tomash, really, Wayne Davis, Vernon Maxwell, Maxwell with 26, Davis with uh, 16 points. His play off the bench, a key to the Gators today. They learned from the mistakes of Auburn. They shot well, played defense well. The zone worked tonight, which it really didn't work against Auburn. As you said, the bench scoring was a key. Defense on Willie Anderson in the first half, I think, was a key as Florida was able to get out to a lead. Anderson had a good second half, but that the tone had already been set in the first half. And now with a couple of schools coming up that Florida has played well against in the past, they're in very good shape as far as the conference race. Very quickly, unofficially for the Gators, Vernon Maxwell had 26. Dwayne Davis, 16 points and 14 rebounds. For Georgia, their leading man is Tony Mack. Mack unofficially with 23 points. Willie Anderson with 17. Tonight's replay of the Florida Gators against the Georgia Bulldogs has been a presentation of Cox Cable 8 Sports. Our producer is Fred Mario. Our director, Bob D'Alessio. Want to thank the crew for doing their job. There they are, a hardworking bunch, and we appreciate their efforts. We'll come back to you next Saturday night with a replay of the Gators and the Ole Miss Rebels as Cox Cable 8 will have that game for you at 10.30 next Saturday night. A very happy group of Gator fans here as Florida wins today by a final score of 87 to 70. For Ken Tomash, this is Steve Russell. Thank you for tuning in. We'll see you next Saturday on Cox Cable 8 Sports. The final once again, Florida 87, Georgia 70. Thank you. So long.